Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about fertilization. We're going to talk about what fertilization is, then a look at the differences between external and internal fertilization, and then throw in the next part of development, which can be also external or internal. So firstly, to define fertilization. So fertilization occurs when two gametes come together to form a zygote. Now, a gamete uh, is a sex cell that comes from either the male or female, one from each, and they are haploid cells, meaning that they have half the genetic material of a normal cell. Once they come together, the zygote uh, then has half of the mother's DNA and half of the father's DNA, uh, creating a diploid cell. External fertilization is just that, is it is external to the body or outside the body. And for pretty much any type of fertilization, there needs to be a moist medium or environment for the gametes to live in. Uh, so generally, when we talk about external fertilization, we're talking about in the water so that the uh, sperm and egg can remain moist. Uh, now, this is pretty good because as well as keeping everything moist, uh, that water is a good way to uh, disperse both the gametes and the zygotes that come from that. The way that this works is that animals release their gametes into the water. Uh, so, for example, the coral will release, the male coral will release all the sperm into the water, and the female coral will release all the eggs into the water. And then uh, these uh, eggs and sperm join each other in the water creating a zygote. And this occurs, as I said, in coral, but as well as in most fish. Uh, there's some good things about external fertilization. So first, it doesn't take a lot of energy to create each one of these gametes, uh, So, which means that you can make lots and lots and lots of gametes with fairly little energy. Uh, they can tra travel great distances. Uh, I said before that this happens in water, so if the tide or the current is right, uh, it's easy to colonize an aquatic area very, very quickly. Uh, the risk, on the other hand, is that the gametes don't meet. Uh, while it's a good uh, thing that the tides move those gametes around or the zygotes around, um, if the tide takes the eggs in one direction and the sperm in another direction, uh, that's going to be a problem. Another thing is that there is no protection for either those gametes or the zygotes that come from it, and they could be eaten uh, or die. So as I said, usually what happens is that lots and lots of uh, gametes are released into the water, and in this case we're talking millions of gametes being uh, released, uh, just so that the numbers are in favour of a fair few of those gametes actually finding the other gamete and creating a zygote. In addition to producing lots of gametes, there are also some behavioral adaptations that animals have to increase the chance of their gametes meeting. An example of this is amplexus, which occurs in some amphibians, uh, where the male will crawl onto the back of the female and hold on tight. Uh, now, they still undergo external fertilization, uh, but what will happen is when the female's ready, she will expel the eggs into a generally a water body, and the male will, as this stream of eggs is being expelled, squirt it with sperm. Uh, this external fertilization works really well to colonize aquatic environments. However, on the land, uh, eggs and sperm has a tendency to dry out. Uh, so, rather than uh, external fertilization, terrestrial animals have evolved internal fertilization, where the female's body creates the moist environment for fertilization to occur. This also increases the chance of fertilization because there is no possibility of the gametes washing down the stream and allows them to be able to put more energy into each particular gamete. Uh, and this is particularly uh, true of eggs, uh, where in external fertilization, 
There might be millions of eggs that are created. Uh, for internal fertilization, it might only be a handful of eggs or perhaps only even one. Uh, so this is the main form of fertilization for animals such as reptiles, birds, insects and mammals. Uh, once fertilization has occurred, uh, and in particular the internal fertilization has occurred, uh, this still doesn't mean that that uh, gamete or that zygote is going to reach maturity inside the female. Uh, so some have external development where they put a protective shell around uh, that zygote and take it outside of the body. Uh, so this for this, it means that all the nutrients that that zygote is going to need to develop uh, to the point where it hatches out of the egg need to be contained within the egg. Uh, so again, this is a lot of nutrients that goes to, into it and something that wouldn't be able to happen uh, in the case of uh, external fertilization because you wouldn't be able to put that amount of uh, energy into each particular egg. In other animals, and particularly mammals, that zygote is left inside the female to develop in the womb. Uh, and it doesn't ne therefore need the nutrients to start with. Uh, and the way that it gets nutrients throughout its development is either by a placenta, in the case of placental mammals, uh, where a, the blood source can get nutrients from the mother to the young, or uh, in the case of marsupials, uh, it is born in a fairly early stage of development and then continues to develop inside the pouch until it's ready to go out into the world. In this video we've looked at fertilization being the joining of two gametes to form a zygote. We've talked about external fertilization common in fish and corals and other uh, because they are aquatic animals uh, where external fertilization you need to produce lots of gametes to ensure the continuation of the species. Uh, with internal fertilization, the female provides the moist environment and more effort can be put or more energy can be put into each of those individual gametes. Once internal fertilization occurs, the female might then put a shell around that zygote and expel it out of their body where external development happens, meaning that there has to be nutrients in that shell uh, for the development, or if they develop internally in a womb, such as in mammals, uh, it can be either fed nutrients or born in a stage, or early stage of development and then mature in the pouch. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.